Welcome to Astronomy Daily, the podcast where we explore the latest and greatest in space and astronomy. I'm your host, Anna. Today, we have an exciting lineup of stories for you, straight from the final frontier. SpaceX has been making headlines with the delay of the eagerly anticipated Polaris Dawn mission, slated to be the first ever private spacewalk. In addition, there's news about SpaceX's return to flight with the Starlink 10, nine mission after a brief hiatus and updates on the Crew-9 mission to the International Space Station, likely the last NASA-led ISS mission to splash down in the Atlantic. Plus, we're diving into groundbreaking developments in dark matter research, thanks to NASA's upcoming Roman Space Telescope. So let's dive into what's new in the cosmos. Our first story today concerns the eagerly anticipated Polaris Dawn mission from SpaceX. Originally slated for late July, the mission has now been delayed to mid to late August. This delay was announced during a recent press conference focused on SpaceX's upcoming Crew-9 astronaut mission to the International Space Station, which also has a scheduled launch for no earlier than August 18th. Polaris Dawn is set to use SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft and Falcon 9 rocket, and the mission is truly groundbreaking. It aims to perform the first ever private spacewalk with funding from billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman. Isaac Mann, who also commanded the historic Inspiration4 mission in September 2021, is once again at the helm of this ambitious flight. The Polaris Dawn crew includes Isaac Mann himself, pilot Scott Kidd Poteet, a retired U.S. Air Force lieutenant colonel, and two mission specialists, Sarah Gillis and Anna Menon, both of whom are engineers at SpaceX. Unlike the Inspiration4 mission, which stayed in a lower Earth orbit, Polaris Dawn will aim to go even higher and conduct at least one spacewalk the first ever all-civilian extravehicular activity. This mission is also the first in a series of three under the Polaris program, all funded and commanded by Isaac Mann. The delays aren't new for Polaris Dawn, as this mission has faced multiple reschedules since its original planning for late 2022. The mission's complexity requires meticulous planning and preparation, hence the necessary delays. During the press conference, Sarah Walker, SpaceX's Director of Dragon Mission Management, explained... There's a lot going on on ISS right now. We opted to fly the Crew-9 mission as our next astronaut mission and are ready to fly Polaris Dawn in late summer, as soon as we fulfill those obligations. So while we will need a bit more patience to witness this historic private spacewalk, it's comforting to know that every measure is being taken to ensure the mission's success. Stay tuned to Astronomy Daily for more updates as the Polaris Dawn mission approaches its new launch window in mid to late August. In recent news, SpaceX is set to resume launches from the Kennedy Space Center after a two-week hiatus. Mark your calendars because this return to flight is scheduled for just after midnight, and it's a significant one. This mission, codenamed Starlink 10-9, will mark the 50th dedicated Starlink launch for 2024, a testament to SpaceX's relentless drive to expand its satellite constellation aimed at providing global internet coverage. This upcoming launch comes on the heels of a thorough investigation prompted by a Falcon 9 mishap earlier this month. During a Starlink mission launched on July 11th, the Falcon 9's upper stage experienced a liquid oxygen leak, which caused an ice buildup around the engine and ultimately led to a mission failure. Despite this hiccup, SpaceX has moved quickly to identify and rectify the issue. The Federal Aviation Administration, which oversees commercial space activities in the U.S., has given SpaceX the green light to resume its launches. According to an FAA statement, a comprehensive review found no public safety concerns related to the anomaly. Essentially, this means that while the overarching investigation continues, SpaceX is free to go ahead with its launch schedule, provided it meets all other licensing requirements. Sarah Walker, SpaceX's Director of Dragon Mission Management, mentioned during a recent press conference that the root cause of the liquid oxygen leak was identified as a crack in a sensor line on the vehicle's upper stage. This line had cracked due to high engine vibrations and a loosening clamp, but the issue has since been addressed through modifications and rigorous testing at SpaceX's facilities in Texas. Steve Stitch, the manager of NASA's commercial crew program, highlighted that both the FAA and NASA were diligent in their review processes, sharing data and engaging in detailed Q&A sessions to ensure the fixes were robust. It's a clear reminder of the meticulous attention to detail that spaceflight technology demands. The two-week hiatus has allowed SpaceX to make all necessary adjustments and preparations, and now, 
multiple launches are lined up to follow Starlink 10, 9. The return to flight mission is not just a milestone for SpaceX, but also for their myriad customers, including NASA and the Polaris program, who rely on the Falcon 9's proven track record. Following this launch, SpaceX has two more missions ready to roll, the Starlink 10, four mission from another Florida launch complex, and the Starlink 9, four mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. The success of this mission will be crucial for the upcoming Crew-9 astronaut launch to the International Space Station, and of course, for the highly anticipated Polaris Dawn mission, which aims to undertake the first ever commercial spacewalk. So stay tuned because SpaceX is back in action, and it's shaping up to be an exciting second half of the year for space enthusiasts everywhere. On the horizon for SpaceX, we have the Crew-9 mission, which is slated to launch to the International Space Station no earlier than August 18th. This mission holds particular significance as it may mark the final NASA-led ISS mission to splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. Issues with large chunks of debris from the Dragon spacecraft, specifically the trunks where fuel and electrical supplies are held, have resulted in incidents ranging from Australia to North Carolina. Because of this, SpaceX is considering a change in splashdown locations for future missions, potentially moving to the Pacific coast. This change could help mitigate space debris concerns and also offer more predictability for scheduling thanks to the typically calmer weather conditions. On board, Crew-9 will be a team of four astronauts. The crew includes Commander Zena Cardman, Pilot Nick Haig, Mission Specialist Stephanie Wilson, and Mission Specialist Alexander Gorbanov from Roscosmos. SpaceX has made the necessary fixes to the Falcon 9, particularly addressing the issues that caused the oxygen leak during a Starlink mission in July. NASA and SpaceX have worked closely together throughout the investigation, and the Falcon 9 has been granted the all-clear to proceed with upcoming missions. While we're keeping an eye on August 18th for liftoff, remember that spaceflight is always subject to change. But if all goes according to plan, Crew-9 will be an important milestone for SpaceX and NASA, and perhaps a turning point for future mission logistics. Exciting advancements are coming to the field of dark matter research, thanks to NASA's upcoming Roman Space Telescope. Set to launch by 2027, this telescope will be a groundbreaking tool in our quest to understand one of the universe's greatest mysteries, dark matter. In the past, dark matter has been elusive because it doesn't emit, reflect, or absorb light, making it invisible to our current observing methods. However, we know it exists because we can see its gravitational effects on galaxies and other cosmic structures. Enter the Roman Space Telescope, which will use high-resolution imaging to study the distribution of dark matter with a precision never before possible. The Roman Space Telescope will focus on the Andromeda Galaxy, our Milky Way's closest galactic neighbor, to observe tidal streams, elongated groups of stars that have been gravitationally torn from globular clusters. These streams act like cosmic ribbons, leading and trailing the clusters as they orbit around galaxies. By analyzing these streams, scientists aim to pinpoint gaps and disruptions that are likely caused by dark matter. The telescope's wide-field instrument will produce images 200 times larger than the Hubble Space Telescope's near-infrared camera, yet at slightly higher resolution. This means Roman will be able to capture vast snapshots of the Andromeda galaxy, allowing astronomers to identify and study multiple tidal streams and their dark matter-induced gaps simultaneously. The data collected will help scientists identify the properties of dark matter halos, spherical regions of dark matter that envelop galaxies. These halos are thought to play a crucial role in shaping the universe's structure, and Roman's observations will provide invaluable insights into their size, density, and distribution. Researchers are particularly excited about the potential to discover smaller sub-halos within larger dark matter halos, proving crucial models of dark matter more conclusively. These subhalos could be the culprits behind the gaps in tidal streams, and Roman's capabilities will help us map out these invisible structures in unprecedented detail. In addition to this, the Roman Space Telescope will collaborate with other groundbreaking missions, such as the European Space Agency's Euclid mission and the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. These collaborations will enhance our understanding of the large-scale structure of the universe and the role dark matter plays within it. 
With its launch, the Roman Space Telescope is set to revolutionize our understanding of the cosmos, providing a window into the dark, unseen forces that govern galaxy formation and evolution. For astronomers and space enthusiasts alike, this is a thrilling time as we inch closer to uncovering the secrets of dark matter. Stay tuned for more updates on this fascinating mission. That's all for today's episode of Astronomy Daily. I've been your host, Anna. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to visit our website at astronomydaily.io. There you can sign up for our free daily newsletter, catch up on all the latest space and astronomy news with our constantly updating news feed, and listen to all our back episodes. Plus, you won't miss out on any exciting updates and special content. You can also find us on social media by searching for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. Your engagement means the world to us. So don't hesitate to follow, like, and share your thoughts on all things cosmic. Thanks for tuning in and keep looking up. 